All right, welcome everybody to the Red Hat OpenShift on AWS webinar. Um, my name is Todd Millard. I'm Chief Growth Officer for Crossvale. This webinar is brought to you by AWS, Red Hat, and Crossvale. Um, and uh, if you guys have any questions, you can use the uh, Q&A at the bottom there to bring up any questions. At the end, we can answer questions for you or we can get back to you uh, through email. Um, I am working from home, so if my two-year-old comes running in here, I apologize, but uh, let you guys know that in advance. Um, and welcome everybody. So today we're gonna cover uh, Rosa. Um, first, we're gonna talk a little bit about Crossbell. We got just one slide to talk about who we are and why we're here having this um, webinar with you. We're gonna talk about why cloud, um, what are the options around cloud, yeah why OpenShift um, is the right solution around for most people around um, containerization and um, Kubernetes, why pod ops is something that you should be thinking about um, from a operation standpoint of how to operate your OpenShift environment. And then also at the end, we'll provide you with the link to claim your $100 Amazon gift card for uh, reviewing the webinar with us. Um, so Crossvale, we are a modernization company. We're based out of Dallas. We have operations in uh, the UK to cover um, our EMEA operations as well. Um, we focus on three big areas in modernization, automation, hybrid cloud, and modern app development. So we're a, we're a um, full service consulting firm that focuses a lot with uh, Red Hat, uh, the Red Hat platform, because a lot of our solutions focus around Red Hat and OpenShift. So if you have questions around things related to automation, whether it's in, in the app dev side of the world or on the operation side, well, we, we can help you with that as well. Hybrid cloud, we're gonna talk about today. Also modern app development. This is uh, where you know, a, lot of, a lot of people are taking a look at you know, how to refactor their apps and move into containerized environments and capitalize better on their infrastructure. This is a big part of the practice that Crossvale provides. We've been in business since 2001 um, and happy to help any, anybody that has any questions, uh, reach out to us. We'll have some contact information at the end on how to get with us. So the promise of cloud. So we'll talk a bit about cloud and I'm sure you know we have some customers that have gone into the cloud, repatriated back into the data center, you know, gone back to the cloud. You know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, how how you're utilizing the cloud, you know, how will you benefit from the cloud? So, you know, like mo most organizations today, you're working to differentiate your business, to move faster, reduce costs, and just plan to do more without disrupting business. And this is, this is the key here is how do you maximize what you're doing in business without disrupting it? Um, that's why moving to the cloud to take advantage of uh, cost savings, scalability, agility, um, is so important to most organizations today. But a lot of people struggle with this, this move to the cloud um, and um, need to you know, augment some of their staff to try to figure out how to make this, this work very well for them. Um, but what comes after the cloud adoption? Often it can become increasingly challenging to incorporate new methodologies and technologies quickly and sustaining long-term business models. So it's having a very good, uh, a good focus plan around your move to the cloud and why you're making that move and what the workloads are is very important. So having that design work done up front is something that the AWS, Crossville, and Red Hat can help you with in, in a way to help you understand how to maximize that. Um, the cost of OpenShift subscriptions is 70% lower coming in through Rosa. So there's a big cost advantage by coming in and using Rosa and maximizing um, what you can do through, uh, through AWS and the, um, uh, on Rosa. So there's a big cost advantage to doing it. But you know you got you to come up with the, the reasons why it's going to be uh, important to your organization. Complexity um, is, re, you know, Many, many leaders are outsourcing um, the implementation and maintenance of going into the cloud because they're finding 
Um, the staff that they currently have have good skills around the legacy stuff they're, they're doing, but as they're moving into the cloud, they need to kind of revamp some of their skills and bring in some, some new skills. And so finding the right managed service to help you um, make that move to the cloud, regardless of um, what you're doing in the cloud, has made sense to 73 and a half percent of the technology leaders out there that are saying, hey, we're, we're looking for ways to be able to move in, but we want to have somebody help support us. And this is where Red Hat's done an exceptional job going out to AWS and building a, a cohesive managed service between Red Hat and um, AWS called Rosa that can really help you accelerate your adoption of OpenShift. OpenShift cluster maintenance um, is included in your subscription that you're getting from, from Red Hat when you're going into Rosa. So it's a, it's a super awesome way to capitalize on cost savings as well as have support on your cluster maintenance. So the challenges, you know, what are the challenges that you have and what are your top priorities, um, you know, kind of when you're making this move? Like, obviously you're, you know, at the business level, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that uh, the business is trying to accomplish and IT needs to move out of being looked at as a cost center and, you know, how are they able to now drive, drive revenue? And the cloud is one way to really help speed up IT and not have IT be something that's kind of slowing down the business. So why outsource the management of the maintenance of your cloud platform? Cloud platforms are a great way to develop and deliver applications, but managing and maintaining them can also be an obstacle for many reasons. So many people have limited time, limited resources and limited expertise. So most businesses want to focus on differentiating and delivering value to customers. Um, and this is this is the most important part of what IT is about is delivering that value. But some, some organizations don't have enough time, resources, or budget. And especially as we've seen in more recent months with what's going on with the workforce is it's hard to find um, you know, the, the engineering resources out there. So finding uh, teams that can actually make sure that you have the skill sets that you need is a, is a big, uh, good part of as you're moving to the cloud be able to capitalize on things like Rosa and also with Crossfail's pod ops. Um, so modernizing your existing applications while building cloud native applications is normally why many people are moving over to, to solutions like Rosa is because they're trying to find, you know, how to reduce that challenge to find the right tools and design to help test operate cloud native ap applications especially when operating at scale with security considerations is super important. So, and this is where Rosa and Red Hat or AWS and Red Hat has really come together to help design a, a great uh, OpenShift cluster solution for you um, to be able to take away, abstract a lot of that pieces away of your cluster maintenance. So refactoring your existing applications become what you can focus on instead of having to focus a lot on what's happening on the plat platform. So, but there is complexity of implementation and integration. So everybody's got their own technical debt, you know, applications are built differently. There's no one size fits all that is just the easy button that you can go in and take lift and shift applications over when you're moving into containerized environments. There is some work that needs to be done on analyzing the, those, those workloads and figuring out what you need to do with those workloads to capitalize on how a Kubernetes OpenShift uh, container environment is going to provide you with the, uh, the right solution that you need in order to, to get your applications to work for you um, and not end up making this more difficult for you. So, and many organizations run into these challenges, you know, in the beginning as they're understanding better about how an application works inside a containerized environment. And then over time, you know, have developed the staff to be able to drive that, that adoption properly. Using a service like uh, Rosa with Red Hat and AWS, this accelerates your capability there. And also we'll talk a bit about how Crossvale augments this service as well with our pod op services that really helps your application team underhand, uh, understand how to get the most out of the platform. So are you looking to bring innovation to the market faster? Do you need to create more flexible models um, in order to adapt to challenging needs? Um, 
do you want to create new customer experiences? You have new applications that you're writing. You're trying to improve customer satisfaction um, or something else. Now, if you are not taking a look at these things from your business, your comp competitors are. And so the we are seeing so many um, enterprises moving to containerized uh, environments because they're finding that they can build in the DevOps and they can build in the uh, modernization in a way that's going to be able to accelerate their innovation. And that's the key to this is how do we get to be able to innovate for our customers and build better customer experiences better. And that's really what it comes down to is, is what is the that customer experience? This is not about modernizing, moving to the cloud just for the sake of everybody's doing it. It comes down to how we provide better customer experiences. So when we're outsourcing challenges, your team should be focused on building and maintaining unique IP for your organization. And this is when we take a look at how AWS, Red Hat, and Crossbell are working together to be able to, to um, help you with this. You know, we're, we're if, if you look down up there at the bottom, here we have the infrastructure part. Now, obviously, you could pick a lot of different types of infrastructure, and we'll talk about this. But when you're picking public cloud and picking Rosa, this, this now we're giving you, you know, they're giving you a world-class organization that's going to be able to manage those, those servers for you. Then you move up into the cluster maintenance and you need to make a decision around cluster maintenance and Red Hat OpenShift with uh, AWS and Red Hat uh, managing that uh, cluster maintenance also then takes away, abstracts away uh, uh, some complexity there. And then there's an area here that we're going to talk about called pod ops. And this is where the dynamic ops and the workload tuning that needs to be done um, to make sure you're getting the most out of your applications running in a containerized environment. And this is an area that Crossvale focuses on that we see a lot of even mature customers have operational gaps in this area. Um, and then this is up top here is the area where uh, your team should be focusing on the application development and maintenance. So this is where the operations team is making sure that the business logic and the um, applications that are being built are you're, you're investing most of your energy into that area because that's going to be where the IP of your business drives success for your business. And then by outsourcing these parts of the platform to world-class organizations that can do this um, at a rate that would be very difficult for you to do on your own, you end up uh, winning and, as, and, and then also be able to have a lot better uh, focus on your applications. So when we take a look at what the, the complete solution here, here is, we take a trusted global partners, Crossbell, Red Hat, Amazon Web Services, um, they're obviously everybody's heard of Red Hat and Amazon Web Services and Crossvale is a, uh, a partner with, with both of these trusted, um, a trusted partner that's an a, a Apex premier partner. So Red Hat and AWS have been partnering since 2008, collaborating on solutions such as obviously everybody knows RHEL um, on AWS. The strength of the partnership has been built on the foundation of Red Hat's work to develop a joint support for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Since, since they worked together very well on that, they built this, um, this product called Rosa on AWS, where Red Hat and AWS are jointly managing the clusters. Um, and so you're taking two world-class organizations that's helping you provide that management of the cluster um, in a way that now makes your operations team less, um, you, you don't need to have as deep of an SME on what's going on in the OpenShift platform because Red Hat and AWS are, are providing SREs to do that for you. Red Hat and AWS provide integrated solutions that simply work to speed and simplify deployment integrations, um, also ensure interoperability and stability. The big thing here is when we take a look at, you know, what OpenShift is bringing to the table, and we'll talk a bit about OpenShift here in a little bit, um, but what OpenShift is bringing to the table is really enterprise Kubernetes. I mean, there's a lot of Kubernetes solutions out there you can choose, but OpenShift is the best one out there because it's providing you the complete solution. With the collaborative support model, 
um, that AWS and Red Hat have put together, take it, you can take advantage of this integrated global support. The idea here is these guys know this stuff very well from the, the platform and the infrastructure that by, by using Rosa, it will simplify the, uh, the needs of your organization so that you can focus more on your applications. Engineering collaboration, Red Hat and AWS engineering teams work together to develop hybrid cloud technologies, um, options that are scalable and include enterprise grade security. So this is obviously very important. Advanced security, Red Hat and AWS provide comprehensive security features that integrate to provide a high level of protection for your IT environment. So this is, this is an area as you're taking a look at different solutions. Obviously you can do DIY, you can put this in your own data center, you could manage the OpenShift or Kubernetes, but then now you're gonna take on the majority of those security um, problems on your own. With uh, Red Hat and AWS, they have, they have helped out on providing a, a very good security for you as well. Advanced operational and application performance tuning is something that Crossville is bringing to the table. In the pod ops area, this is an area that we see um, many customers uh, struggle with is how to properly tune and dynamically uh, scale your environment so you can get the most out of moving to a containerized environment. We find people move into container environments and still kind of think about their IT operations from how they used to do it on VMs and we help them take we help them take a look at how to scale and manage and tune their applications in a container environment, which is a, a different world. You, you're off a little bit on your, your, your quotas and your tuning and you grow this environment to a big environment and you could end up having a lot of space that you that is unused. And the whole idea around containerization is how do we maximize that, that infrastructure so that you're, the infrastructure you're using, you're getting value out of. So the complete solution, when you really take a look at this, and I'll talk about kind of the numbers about how, this, how all this breaks down later on, but when you're using the managed infrastructure on AWS and the, the number one container platform, Red Hat OpenShift container platform, the managed cluster maintenance with AWS and Red Hat and the managed pod ops, you're actually saving 67% off of what it would cost you if you were to do this yourself in your data center. So not only do you have world-class support, you have SREs that this is what they focus on. So you don't have to have the open shift expertise as at the strength of those the, that expertise in your own data center like like you would but also you're going to be saving a tremendous amount by packaging all this together and like i said we'll before we get to the end we'll we'll show some examples of how all this um how all this breaks down when you're putting these solutions together so let's talk about OpenShift. Um, for a little bit. Obviously, you know, OpenShift's a, a Red Hat um, container platform. Um, we, we work with OpenShift a lot because we, uh, OpenShift provides the most um, comprehensive Kubernetes platform that's out there and also the most stable. So when we take a look at why um, why you would want to choose OpenShift. Like if you're in, like maybe, maybe you already own OpenShift and you're looking at going, okay, I want to do some hybrid cloud and move, move some of this stuff to the cloud. Um, or maybe you're at, at a point now where you're trying to choose, hey, which platform do I go with? Um, with it, with OpenShift, it is, it, it is, it's the foundation of a trusted enterprise Kubernetes platform. So by, by choosing that, Red Hat has added productive enhancements to deliver an application platform with all the fully integrated um, components that you will need to build, deploy, and manage containerized applications. In some, slide, in, in some future slides, I'm gonna show you kind of what that difference is between what you would get with just kind of going with, uh, with a Kubernetes platform versus OpenShift. But the idea is it, it is completely everything that, that you would need to be able to, to provide a enterprise Kubernetes platform. In many ways, OpenShift 4 is a smarter Kubernetes platform because um, Red Hat streamlined the installation and upgrade experience. So 
uh, obviously with going with uh, Rosa, there is very, very streamlined experience on building clusters as well as adding more nodes to those clusters. Um, you can be up and running in literally less than 15 minutes um, with Rosa getting a, a cluster up and going. Uh, and you have everything you need from metering and monitoring at the cluster level, applications and developer services, Kubernetes updates, security patches, and uh, component updates can be deployed with a single click. So these the operations becomes uh, uh, easier uh, with uh, OpenShift and uh, Rosa. Based on the uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux core OS is what OpenShift runs on. So it's actually streamlined to be an operating system that runs uh, specifically for the OpenShift container environment, um, which is particularly use useful when you deploy OpenShift on cloud infrastructure because the entire cluster can scale up and down based on your application needs. So when we're using CoreOS and OpenShift and you have applications that have um, needs to scale up and down, this is an area where you can maximize um, the value of what you're getting out of your infrastructure. Instead of build, overbuilding your infrastructure so that you have more than what you need, except for your peak times, we can build the OpenShift uh, cluster so that it can scale as demand goes up and down. OpenShift uh, 4 scales with your needs from 10 containers up to 10,000. So we're talking a bit about kind of like, what's the difference if you go, okay, um, like AKS, EKS, you know, you're doing like uh, community Kubernetes versus OCP, OpenShift Container Platform. Um, it, you really get what you pay for. All the green areas is what you'll have to provide um, and integrate and maintain um, if you're going with a just Kubernetes solution versus going with um, OpenShift. So making sure you're not you're not comparing apples to oranges can be um, very difficult when you're kind of taking a look at a lot, a lot of these different solutions. Um, many enterprises find that they have highly talented engineering teams that have successfully been able to build Kubernetes platforms or build solutions in some of these. Uh, solutions like EKS, AKS out there that are great solutions for certain use cases. But what, what happens is, and I'm sure some of you guys have experienced this, when you have you know, these smart engineering teams that put all this stuff together, but those guys move off into other areas in the company or move to another organization. And then um, the new people that are coming in are stuck kind of holding the bag on trying to figure out how to continue to maintain this because you're still now responsible for maintaining all of these, this cobbling of all these solutions that you put together. Where this is where when, when you go with OpenShift, OpenShift is responsible to maintain all of these pieces for you. And as they rev through, through different versions, they're making sure all this is working hardened and secure. So it makes your life a lot easier because you can focus on your business applications and not have to focus so much on what's going on inside the platform because the platform is designed to work together. So we take a look at, um, you know, we were, we were talking a bit about, you know, kind of like the difference between Kubernetes versus OpenShift. And, you know, I have a list here of, you know, what's not included. So um, I kind of, I, I like to use an analogy um, like, like if, if you were in a business where you needed to move freight and there's many different ways that you could move freight, you could, you could walk it to where you need to go. That's kind of slow, right? You could, you could put it in your car and drive it. You could use UPS, FedEx, US mail. Um, you could have your own um, freight. You could have your own tractor trailers. Um, and and deliver your your freight that way. When I look when we look at Kubernetes, I look at Kubernetes as this is this is the engine, and then there's lots of pieces that you're that you would need to put around that engine so that you actually have the capability of moving that freight to to where it needs to go. When you look at buying OpenShift, 
It is like buying the tractor trailer where all the pieces are there. It's all been tested and put together. You don't have to try to build all this yourself and figure out how to maintain it. Um, people are trained and understand how to maintain it. And there are um, support mechanisms that are built in not only for the Kubernetes portion, but also for all the pieces on how they're um, tied together. Just like if you bought a tractor trailer and you had a problem with it, you could take it to a service shop. They're gonna be like, what kind do you have? And, and then they could figure out how to, how to fix it based off of that. Versus if you had your own engine, you built your own frame, you put your own uh, uh, cab together, all that stuff, and then something goes wrong, you take it to a service shop and they're like, I have no idea exactly. It's going to take um, some time to, to troubleshoot this and, and, and figure this out because you kind of built this yourself. That's why we take a look at kind of like if you're doing it yourself, you know, can you troubleshoot the issues? And this is where AWS and Red Hat and Crossville really come in to help you. Everything is great when things are working, but let's face it, this is technology. Things don't always work together as we expect them. There's lots of things that uh, through technology and changes and new things that are being uh, coming out, ways that you design the platform and utilize the platform, the choices you make around security, uh, the integrations that you have, all of these things all need to work together. And it, when you do run into problems and something's not working, who's going to be able to support that for you? Can you, can you, you know, troubleshoot Kubernetes on your own? DIY adds a lot of risk this way. And this is why OpenShift and Rosa is such a great solution, especially with adding Crossfell PodOps on top of that as well. So that PodOps can help tune your applications. So um, many cases we've seen over the years where, again, you have these very talented engineering teams that come in and build all this stuff out. They learn the environment very well. They learn the Kubernetes. They learn all the pieces that they put together. But now you're responsible for basically being a software platform company because as things change and things get updated, you're responsible now to continue to maintain all of that. And then when those people move on, somebody else is responsible to have to learn all that in the way it was designed. And this is where Red Hat, Rosa, um, AWS, Crossbell can come in and simplify your platform so that you can get much more out of your platform. So we'll talk, we'll talk a bit about Rosa next. Let me take a sip of my coffee here. And I think my, my children are doing good because I haven't heard them uh, make any noise yet. So. Um, so when it comes to OpenShift infrastructure, you have a lot of choices. So you, you need to um, make the choice of what way you're going to, where you're going to run OpenShift. And Red Hat's done an exceptional job at making your life a lot easier in installing and maintaining in all these different environments, whether you go physical, you go virtual, you put it in private cloud, you put it in public cloud, or even on the edge. And even in the case where you need to make choices that are more than one of these, like you want to have an environment running in the public cloud, but you also need to have clusters running on the edge. Um, Red Hat's done an exceptional job with providing a solution called advanced cluster management or that makes it much easier for, for you to be able to manage clusters across multiple infrastructure choices. Um, and so more and more, uh, we're seeing a lot more activity going into hybrid cloud where people are now making choices that make the best choice for that particular application, that solution, or the geography um, where they need to be running that solution. And OpenShift gives you a, the, the uh, ability to make these, these choices, and they're committed to continue to give you this ability to make these choices over time um, versus something like, like, like if you go with EKS or AKS or something, something like that, you know, you're going to be in the cloud because that is a cloud-based based solution. If you go with Rosa, Rosa's in the cloud, but you could also now have a cluster running on the edge or a cluster running in your data center and have all this stuff work very nice together because of uh, what Red Hat's done with uh, ACM. So it makes it easy for you to have hybrid solution. 
So then you also have, okay, the next level up, got to think about, okay, cluster maintenance. What am I going to do about cluster maintenance? Who's going to maintain this? Obviously, you could run it in your own data center. You could spin it up in EC2 instances, and you could have your own operations team um, maintain the cluster. You could choose to have a third-party provider come in and do that for you. You could choose to have um, a public, uh, public cloud provider. Red Hat's done a great job of being able to offer this across AWS, Azure, uh, IBM Cloud, um, and, and on uh, Google Cloud. One of the best solutions though is the, Ro the Rosa solution since it is being supported by Red Hat and AWS. And there's actually some um, great um, cost uh, um, savings with packaging this together um, with the AWS and um, Red Hat on their subscription. So that's something I'll talk about later on, why Rosa is such a good economic solution as well as a good um, service solution. But that's something you, you know, so you got to choose your infrastructure and then you got to move up to the next step and say, I'm going to, I'm going to choose my, uh, how am I going to maintain the cluster? So Red Hat, OpenShift, service on AWS. So, you know, why, why go with Rosa? Empowering developers to innovate. You know, there's faster application development um, and integrated developer tools. So this is one of the areas that, that we find people are really trying to solve when moving to containerized environments and, and choosing OpenShift is really about um, the de developer screaming for the ability to have those containerized environments and innovate. Flexible consumption-based pricing. So this is something that makes it easy on Rosa, whether you want to go on demand, you want to do annual, or you even want to sign a multi-year contract, there's, there's flexible pricing based off of what your commitment level is going to be. So this, this also makes it easy for you to make choices like, hey, I, got, I know what the static size of the environment is, but I also need to have an environment that's going to be able to scale up and down so you can get the best cost um, savings uh, over time. Clear path to hybrid cloud deployments. Uh, production ready Kubernetes, uh, simplify shifting workloads to AWS and public cloud. So there is a, by moving into Rosa and utilizing um, some of the tools that are available as well as some services like Crossbell has available to help you with migration. This is uh, an area that uh, Rosa could, you could capitalize on with Rosa. Reduce complexity, use containers and Kubernetes with reduced complexity, automate OpenShift provisioning for deployment and management. Uh, OpenShift, Red Hat's done an exceptional job at building OpenShift to simplify uh, running uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and especially because, like we talked about before, Kubernetes being the engine, and then there's all these pieces that we saw on a few slides back that, that are supporting pieces that you really need to have to have an enterprise solution. So, and, and OpenShift has put all those pieces together for you. Improve efficiency and productivity. So when we take a look at you know, Red Hat, OpenShift uh, on AWS, reduces operational complexity so you can focus quickly on building and scaling applications consistently in the cloud. The idea here is really how do we get faster application uh, development? Um, that's the faster application development is really what is going to make the, the big difference on innovation where IT is not holding the business back. IT is um, build, allowing the business to innovate. And actually, if you can innovate faster than your competitors, then that's going to be where you're able to gain market share. Reduce oper operational costs. So there's a lot of cost advantages to using Rosa and uh, with Red Hat and AWS, as well as um, outsourcing the pod op services to Crossvale in a way that we can really help you take advantage of all the pieces um, that you need from an operational standpoint and from tuning your applications so that you, you can focus on your applications. And reduction in developer wait time. So lost productivity um, with developers dealing with administration tasks. Um, Red Hat and Rosa has made it a whole lot easier so developers can uh, focus on developing and not on a lot of the other non-development tasks. So a developer stated that you reduce the lines, reduce the line of code 
you have to monitor when you change things. This means smaller, faster release cycles, which means the business can get new features faster. Uh, this is a very important part of uh, modernization. Operational efficiency um, really uh, is accelerated with Rosa because you're using the world-class teams of, of AWS, Red Hat, and also Crossville to, to help with that. When we take a look at what developers want, Rosa is really a turnkey solution for what developers want. Developers are looking for ways to accelerate their ability to code. Um, and Rosa is not just a simple Kubernetes distribution, but a complete turnkey application platform that is integrated with tools and services for faster application development and delivery. It integrates critical cluster services such as monitoring, logging, networking, and developer productivity tool, tools such as service mesh, code ready workspaces, serverless, and more to empower developers and, to meet their needs. This is super important because um, it really comes down to how do we enable those developers to get the most out of the platform. Um, and by using a solution like OpenShift and um, Rosa, that's built in. You're 15 minutes, you got the cluster up and going, and then you can start building um, governance and models around how you're gonna provide the, the services to your developers. So Rosa's features, when, when, when you take a look at why to use Rosa versus um, you know, doing this on your own, self-service deployments, support and security, uh, service tools and integration, and the biggest thing is flexible pricing. So we talked about all of these um, in, in prior slides, but when it really comes down to um, the innovation, the flexible pricing is a very good aspect of choosing Rosa because of your ability to build your applications in a way that you can scale as you need them. Like a, like a good example of this would be like a service, like somebody like Ticketmaster that, you know, 10 a.m., on a Monday morning, they're going to sell a bunch of, uh, they're opening up to sell a bunch of tickets for uh, a concert. Obviously, they're going to have more workload that is going to be running through that environment than um, maybe three hours later after that concert sells out. So having, instead of building your environment so that you have to have all of that available to you, whether you are um, needing it or not, Rosa and OpenShift makes it very flexible to be able to scale up as that demand comes in and then scale back down so you only use what you need and you're paying for what you need. But like I said, on the, on the flexible pricing, it's also nice because you can sign long-term contracts on your stable environment and capitalize on, on cost savings. And we'll talk, we'll talk a bit about kind of how that cost savings breaks down if you go with long-term or one year or even on demand so you can see what those differences are. Full stack management from a global um, site reliability engineering team. Um, you know, obviously Red Hat has, has teams that have actually helped build Kubernetes. So, I mean, they are, what Red Hat has done over the years of actually putting code into the community and helping build um, the Kubernetes engine is, is more than any other um, team that's out there. So when you take a look at a organization that's gonna help support that platform, Red Hat is a great solution to go with to support not only the Kubernetes part, but also all the other pieces that they've helped um, design the complete solution around them. The SREs are not just product engineers uh, developing software um, and not just systems engineers running something um, someone else made. The Red Hat SRA team is a, is a hybrid of the both. And, and that's an important factor as well as they, are, they understand the product engineer side and they also understand the uh, system, system side of it. So this is why um, going with Rosa, AWS, Crossville can make a big difference for you on reducing your risk and having a platform that's gonna run uh, better for you. Build and scale applications with confidence, we do the rest. That's the whole idea here. When you go back to your organization and you say, hey, the reason why we should go with Rosa, not only is it going to be most cost effective, it's going to make us be able to 
sleep well at night because if something goes wrong in the middle of the night or we have a production issue, we know that we have teams of people that are going to be there, but also it's going to give us the capability of focusing our budget mostly on what we need to do to be able to innovate for the business. And when it really comes down to it, the business is what's paying for this. And it's finding the way that the business understands what we're doing here is, is so that the business can innovate and be more competitive and provide better customer experiences. So it's expert management support, turnkey application platform, and consistent native experience across clouds. These together comes down to innovation for the business. Now we'll talk a little bit about Crossvale, kind of what we bring to the table around how we provide some services above what Red Hat and um, Rosa is doing to help support teams that are moving into containerized environments on OpenShift. So I showed you this slide earlier where we have the choices that you need to make infrastructure. You know, where are you gonna run it? And we talk about cluster maintenance. Who's gonna maintain that cluster for you? So in this case, what we're talking about here is public cloud. So it's being run on AWS and it's being managed by AWS and uh, Red Hat to be able to provide that cluster maintenance. Then when we look at the very top here, your application development and maintenance. Now, so this is where your team is coming in and saying, hey, I am building applications. I have third-party products. I have middleware. I have things that I need to run in here and they're gonna be responsible for building and running those things. What we find is this area here, which is the dynamic ops and workload tuning. And I'll go through an example of, of what some of this stuff is as well, based off of what, um, what Rosa will do for you and then also what your client responsibilities are. But this really comes down to understanding how the platform works and how your unique workloads are dynamically changing. New workloads are coming in and how that puts pressure on the, on the platform so that you can have better performance for your workloads, as well as a more economical platform that you don't need to use as much of, uh, as, as, as many servers because you're, you're finding the way to tune the platform to work best for your unique applications. Just like everything else, you know, everybody's got their unique workloads. Everybody has a unique experience that needs to be done here in order to tune those workloads. And how do those workloads deal with the risk level that you're willing to take or not take um, and how to, how to make sure that you're getting the feedback um, from what's going on with your applications so that you get the best out of, out of there. We've been managing OpenShift environments for years. Um, and we have found this area right here, this pod ops area is the area that even the most mature teams that have very big environments struggle with ma maintaining that they're getting the most out of their workloads. And this, and this area right here is an area that can bring you a lot of value. So when we take a look at what does that really mean? And when we're talking about what, what, what pod ops is, especially when we're talking about pod ops with Rosa, first of all, I'm going to show you what Rosa um, doesn't do for you and what you would be responsible for. And pod ops takes care of all of that. But also, so that's the advanced cluster oversight is, this, is the areas above the cluster maintenance that you're still going to be responsible for. The dynamic workload tuning, proactive issue um, resolution, standardized workload onboarding, distributed tracing and uh, workload uh, deployment oversight. So an example of this, you know, you have, you have deployments that are happening instead of having, you know, your, a bunch of your team members after hours or on weekends having to deal with deployments, the Crossville team will help with those deployments. When it comes down to workload onboarding, this is a big part where we see um, people making static decisions around their workloads. Um, and then not tuning those workloads and overusing resources. And what happens often is if, re, if there becomes a resource issue in workloads that are running, people make decisions and then just request more resources. Ops team then says, okay, we're gonna give you more of those resources, but it never, it never moves into a dynamic um, uh, solution where 
uh, yes, today, this is what the, what the um, resources are demanding, but we need to continue to do analysis on this so that we can understand how to dynamically tune what those needs are. This is, a, this is the area where Crossbell brings this to the table, especially, at, especially if you have an initiative where you're gonna bring in a bunch of different diverse workloads super important to be able to understand how to actually govern the onboarding of those workloads and then how to get the most out of the platform with those workloads while the advanced cluster oversight is also happening as well. So we find about 22% um, do not know that they need this. So they're running OpenShift clusters and they're just oblivious that this, that, that this is going on. We went into one client to do an assessment and they were, um, they were running 70% higher on the uh, number of cores that they needed. Um, we went in and were, were able to tune their pods better and reduced from reduced 70% of their cores um, running the same workloads, getting the same performance. 41% assume somebody else is doing this. And this is often the case where you have a, a application team and then you also have a ops team. And so, each one of those teams is assuming that the other team is doing the analysis to understand how the performance is done on here. And so um, there, there's not really somebody that is uh, responsible. 29% continue to pay um, expensive consultants. So they bring in you know, global SIs um, to come in and focus on this area because they're like, hey, I know we need this, but we don't have the staff or we had the staff, but we lost some of our um, SMEs on this. And so I need to have somebody else come in uh, and help maintain this. And this is where our pod op service, um, we do this 24 seven on a managed service where we can do it um, you know, cheaper than if you're just having a, you're paying for a consultant to sit there and do that. 8% have the skills uh, to do this exceptionally well. So our, our managed advanced services, we have managed cluster disaster recovery, managed whole cluster data encryption, managed security compliance, managed DevOps, and managed runtime middleware cloud packs. So organizations that need to have um, somebody that has experience on how to maintain and manage your an OpenShift cluster, but also take a look at how are you dealing with data encryption, you know, you have compliance issues, HIPAA compliance, uh, PCI, you know, different compliance um, requirements. Um, we also understand how to lay out different options for you around disaster recovery, um, and, as well as um, security compliance. So these are areas uh, um, that are, are add-on services that Crosswell can come in and help provide for you. Or these are areas that you would, you know, provide for, for yourself, and we could help you manage them. So Crossbell OpenShift um, packaged with Rosa for hybrid cloud. Why we're different? This is very high touch. Um, you know, Rosa's providing that cluster maintenance, which is they do an exceptional job on that, uh, and we're providing that high touch area in between the application and the operations team to be able to maximize how you're getting, uh, how you're, you're performing and dealing with dynamic um, solutions. So instead of, instead of you having to write a ticket and send it out to um, Rosa because you're having a problem, the pod op service would say, hey, this thing's not performing the way it normally would be. So we're monitoring it and then coming back and dealing with proactively uh, solving those situations or providing, you know, where we would send a ticket to Rosa for you to be able to deal with an issue that's related to the platform, um, as well as things related to how are you, how are you managing the upgrades and patching, um, we would help provide that as well. So we talked about the, uh, you know, what's the client responsibility on Rosa. So AWS and, um, Red Hat has done an exceptional job. This is off of the Red Hat site showing the responsibilities. Whoops, let me go back here. Why can't I move it? There you go. The responsibilities of what you as a client uh, would be responsible for operationally. So um, 
if you um, want to have access to this link, I could send, you know, just send us a, um, send us an email and I can send you where to find this. So you can just search Red Hat Rosa responsibilities and you can find this on the, on the Red Hat site. So we have all of these areas where it says customer, um, it, you're going to be responsible for solving these, these issues. If you're employing Crossvale, um, pod op service, we um, will work with your team to help solve these problems for you and manage them for you. Like you can see here where Red Hat is solving a bunch of these things here, shared responsibilities. So logging, Red Hat's going to do some of that for you, but also you have re responsibilities um, in there as well. well. And then as we go through all that and we get down into the shared matrix down here, when we take it application networking, here's a list of you know, your customer responsibilities. Virtual networking, what, you're, what you would be responsible for. So it is, it, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff that you need to make sure from an operations team that you're able to, um, to take care of um, when managing uh, OpenShift cluster, whether it's, whether it's operating in Rosa. If it's operate, if you're operating it yourself, you're also going to be you would be responsible for all of these areas where it says Red Hat responsibility. So all of this stuff would be your responsibility. But on Rosa, they're taking care of this. You're going to be responsible for these areas. If you employ Crossvale's pod op service, then we'll take on these responsibilities for you as well as the um, the performance tuning tuning of your application. So. That's why we look at this and we go, Crossville is really um, providing the, uh, the rest of the solution that gives your team the capability that they can focus on the application um, and really kind of outsource the advanced cluster management stuff to a company that knows how to do this very well. So I can keep going through this list here um, uh, of all the areas that you're, you also have responsibility for. So we simplify your journey, install, deploy, harden, operate. You know, when you take a look at using um, Rosa, uh, OpenShift and Crossvale, all of these things are, are being taken care of for you. If you decide that you want to, you know, buy your own, run it in your data center, have your own team management, these are all areas that uh, you're gonna be responsible for installation, deploy, hardening, operating, all of that stuff is, you know, would be something you need to make sure you have your, your team members for. We do have our managed service has a uh, at SLA response times built in. Um, so we are 24 seven, 365 as well. So regardless of um, when there's a problem, whether it's a holiday, um, you know, we're there watching and proactively tuning your environment. Some of the things that uh, Crossvale brings to the table from an operational managed service is we're providing you with, with more control. You have, you have control over the environments, even if you don't necessarily have a full understanding of OpenShift. This is an area where you can have a, a SME on your side engage with our team to understand how to get how to get more control out of those environments, providing you with flexibility as well, um, where we can help help manage some of the more complex um, parts of managing your cluster. Um, we're taking care of the skills, so this is the area where we find people that that struggle. They uh, go out and um, get started with you know Kubernetes or OpenShift or containerized environments. They start bringing the skills in. But then because so many organizations are out there are looking for people with these skills, then people start getting recruited away and you constantly are in the battle of making sure that you have the, the skill, the, the team members that have the right skills. This where using a managed service like uh, Rosa and Crossvale, we're providing those, those skills for you so that you don't have to maintain and constantly train. Um, relationship. Um, uh, we also provide a, um, a, uh, a, a technical account manager that would be focused on, on your account to make sure that we're, we're focused on how to help you guys get to what your goals are. 
Um, and then engineering, we already talked about this um, because uh, if you were to do your own 24-7, 365 uh, management, usually you're gonna need a minimum of six engineers uh, to do that if you're trying to do 24-7, 365 on the pod ops portion of this. So the real issues that we solve, um, you know, being, being having somebody available there after hours so your team members aren't out there having to deal with the, these types of issues so you have peace of mind. Um, you know, we proactively care for your environment. Um, so this is not a, a reactive solution where you need to find what the problem, you need to find that there's a problem and then submit a ticket. We have people that are not only providing proactive support, but also they are looking at how to, um, how to continually build the right alerting and logging in there to help you understand um, how your system can run better. Obviously, the better we can make it so that your system runs in an automated fashion, then that's less work for us. So we're, we're looking to try to simplify your life. Um, we can create control points with your team. So your team, even if you don't have a team that has tremendous experience in OpenShift, um, we're engaging with your team uh, and being able to provide the right um, feedback to them so that they understand how to maximize the environment. Uh, number of changes in your environment are staggered. Um, so we can work with your team on understanding how to help, help you with deployments. Um, and a lot of it comes down to what you don't know you need to know. You also now have a, a, a team that can sit between the apps team and your ops team to help everybody understand what they, they need to know. Um, continue on more issues that we, that we cover. So there's a lot, of, a lot of real world issues that we cover, but if we take a look at what our customers say about the service, there's a lot of customers out there that are using um, Crossvail um to help support them in their environments uh so we have some some feedback from them on a lot of the things we've done around consistency creating less issues full features faster resolution uh, full transparency expert advice all of these things um, are available um, we, we are managing clusters in uh, asia in EMEA across the us so we also have an operational assessment. So if you have a if you have an open shift environment and you're looking at moving some or that environment over to Rosa, we actually have a consulting service to come in, run an operational assessment on this, and we can help you with what that that migration would look like. So that's something that we could also help with. We're going to talk about some cost comparisons as we take a look at the cost comparison um, of of doing OpenShift, uh, OpenShift Container Platform on-prem versus Red Hat OpenShift on AWS. So like I said before, you know, you're saving 67%. So I wanna show you how, how we get there. So uh, I have this broken down into small, medium and large. So small, two clusters, you have one non-prod, one prod, you're consuming 128 virtual CPUs. Um, and we have this broken down into DIY platform ops and DIY workload ops. So when we take a look at what we were talking about before the platform ops, this is the cluster maintenance. Like, so that's the area that Rosa does. The workload ops is the uh, pod ops part, that part that's in between the operations team and the applications team to make sure that you're, you're tuning. So when we look at, okay, on-prem, I'm going to buy it install it run it yourself you're not you're you're going to build the team to make you make sure you have uh the right uh skill sets you're looking at for 128 virtual cpus about 65,000 on your subs you're looking at um about 157,000 is what you're you're going to spend on ftes to deal with the platform ops about 237 is what you deal with on the workload ops and then your infrastructure cost, this is amortized over three years for buying the servers um, that you'd need. Uh, this is a bid that we have from Dell. Dell's one of our partners to be able to then say, okay, this is what my cap, CapEx dollars would be. So then we can break it down into a CapEx budget, an OpEx budget, and your FTE cost comes to 476. 
Now let's offload. Now, if we go over here and we take a look at Rosa and we say, okay, let's offload this to Rosa. Now we're gonna have Rosa manage this for us, but you're gonna take on your own workload um, ops. So Rosa, uh, when we're comparing your Red Hat subs and your uh, cluster maintenance. Now Rosa for this size environment is gonna run you about 32,000. You're gonna to need to spend about 157,000 on your, um, your FTEs. And then you'll spend about 80,000, 81,000 on your um, cloud cost. So that this brings us substantially down to 270 versus 476. And if you're looking at then saying, okay, well, let me have Crossvale come in to deal with my workload ops. So they're gonna deal with all the advanced cluster management stuff that Rosa doesn't do. And then also the tuning of the platform. So again, you have the Rosa cost here. Now your cost that you would pay for FTEs versus now outsourcing that to Crossvale. And then the infrastructure cost that you pay for the cloud. So this is where you're seeing this difference. Do it all myself running in a data center, spend 476,000 um, when you take into consideration the, the FTEs that you're gonna need or outsource this um, in a way that I'm gonna end up um, having uh, Rosa, Crossvale, um, Red Hat, AWS all together um, helping me solve this so I can have my uh, applications team focus on this you can see a substantial difference in what your cost would be. We can take a look at this. If you go to five clusters, 300, 384 virtual CPUs, say you have some compliance requirements. So you have you know, a, a PCI non-prod and prod, or you have a lab cluster. You know, so we, you end up having um, uh, more clusters and then um, you, you have more virtual CPUs. So, when we take a look at the difference between going, hey, I'm gonna do it all on my own, I'm gonna hire all my FTEs, I'm gonna have 24 seven, this is what your annual cost would be, including your, your amortized um, cost for, um, for hardware versus coming to uh, Rosa, where Rosa is going to um, substantially lower your cost on your, your subs and your uh, maintenance, uh, and then offload the work, workload ops to Crossville, and then your cloud infrastructure costs, which is part of Rosa. So again, big, big difference on what your costs are there. Let's say you're going into a larger environment. So we call this a large 10 clusters, 1152 virtual CPUs. You're looking at about a budgeting 2 million to cover that all in your own data center versus 1.2 million to do that in Rosa where you got the Rosa cost, you're offloading the workload um, ops and then dealing with your uh, infrastructure costs. Now I talked to you about, about there's some differences here that you could also, or actually some differences here that you, that you could save because when you take a look at, so those costs are based off of on the, on the Rosa AWS page, this is where it breaks down. This is the cost for nine, a nine node cluster. And this is based off of using a one-year contract. If you were to have build this out, but you did a longer term, a three-year contract, there's an additional 33% savings that you'd have on the, on the Rosa fee. So there's additional savings that you'd end up um, being able to have on that um, through uh, longer term contracts. So you could even get a better uh, savings on there. Save it. Uh, also, on demand um, is 50% higher. So when we're taking a look at there's a you know this is the 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 one year contract versus on demand. But if on demand you're just using scaling nodes to be able to scale up and down as needed, um, you know the, there that's a good option to be able to use those scaling nodes. So boost innovation and growth within your organization. Crossvale. This is. Um, uh, you can claim your gift card by going to crossvale.com slash boost innovation growth within your organization. Screenshot this here um, and go out to that um, to claim your, your uh, gift card. Uh, make sure you use the email address that you use to register for this event that you came to. Um, and thank you so much uh, for your time. If there are any questions, 
Let me see if I can get over to the questions part. Okay, so we have um, so we have one asking uh, if uh, if they could have access to the video. Yep. So our um, our team will um, edit the video and get it all ready, and then have it posted up on on our site. We could we'll send out a um, a email to you, letting you know that it, it's available for um, those that attended and those that uh, wanted to attend but weren't able to make it. And um, and then also a question about uh, at what point is OpenShift coming into the stacks layer um, with respect to Kubernetes AWS? Um, I don't have that particular answer, but what I will do, uh, Abram, is I will reach out to our OpenShift uh, managed service team, our technical team. I will have them provide you back an answer to your email on that particular question. Um, so I can make sure I get you the uh, proper answer. On that. Thank you everybody for your time. Hope you uh, got a lot of value out of, out of today and please reach out if you have any questions for, um, for us or want to ask us um, you know, how um, these types of services could help your organization. You're looking at automation like Ansible, you're looking at OpenShift, you're looking at things even like, like satellite smart management for your REL environments. These are all areas that Crossville uh, works on. We also, uh, the, the majority of our business comes from um, helping people with refactoring their applications. So when you're looking at moving from legacy uh, applications and you need to then break them down into modules to then break them down into microservices and then run them in containerized environments. This is an area that uh, Crossville can bring to the table because we understand the infrastructure, the DevOps and the application uh, development portion of this. We also have special expertise in uh, financial services. A good portion of our customer customers are financial services. So we'd be happy to um, you know, work with uh, those financial customer, financial services customers with some of our, our specialists as well. So thank you guys every, uh, very much. You guys have a wonderful day.